man that had a heart problem verses 36 through 38. Now Abigail went to Nabal and there he was holding a feast in his house like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him for he was very drunk and therefore she told him nothing, little of much, until morning light. So it was in the morning when the wine had gone from Nabal, his wife told him these things, that his heart died within him, and he became like a stone. Then it happened after about 10 days that the Lord struck Nabal, and he died. A man with a heart problem. Much has been said in the scriptures throughout the years about Nabal. Some said that he was a man with a heart problem. Others said that he was a man that died twice a man that died twice, Bible scholars and readers. You remember in the scriptures in the book of Jude, chapter one, verse 12, it speaks also of men that was blemished in their own self. Men that loved their own self and only was worried about feeding themselves. Jude 1.12 says that they loved themselves so much that they too was died twice. This, this man life that we're talking about this morning is Nabal. Nabal. He was married to a woman named Abigail. Now, Nabal would have never been heard of if it didn't if he didn't have communication with David in the scripture. This man Nabal life only took up one chapter in the Bible. The Bible tells us many things about Nabal. Let's let's look at what he says about him. He tells us, first of all, about his, his name and his character. Nabal meant fool. And, you know, I, I wonder what type of parents did Nabal have that would name their own son fool. We, we have to be careful when I tell young folks now, you have to be careful what you call your child. Amen. And what, what you name your child, because a lot of times they begin to believe what you're saying about them. If you tell a child from the time that they're young, and every time you see them, you call them stupid, mm. it won't be long before they really begin to believe that they are what? Mm -hmm. Stupid. <laughs> they, they believe that. So we, we have to be careful what we call children and and what we name our children. But 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 this man, the parents named him Nabal, which translates food. And and consequently, what happened was his name also ended up showing, describing his character. The Bible tells us that he was a wealthy man. He had a thousand goats and three thousand sheep. He he was a descendant of, of Caleb. He, now he inherited Caleb's wealth. But let me tell you, he inherited the wealth and property, but he did not inherit no virtues. The Bible tells us that a fool and his money will soon depart. Mm. I wonder 
I'm always puzzled about to the corner how many athletes that 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 signing multi-million contracts, and in ten years they broke. They have enough money that 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 none of us would probably ever see, but in ten years they'll run through it and they just what broke. Nabal didn't didn't have no virtues. The Bible says he was a crafty and a mean man. They said Nabal had no honor or he had no honesty. He was, he was hard pressed, evil and oppressed. He was a man that used fraud or violence to get whatever he wanted. Nabal didn't care how it went down as long as he ended up on top. Nabal was, was shrewd and, and rude, and he was not equal in his business deal. <clears throat> it was only about him and only him. The second thing the Bible tells us about Nabal is that he was married to a woman named Abigail. Abigail, the name Abigail means joy of her father. Isn't that beautiful? Then one tends to wonder, how does a woman that is joy to her father and has such a sweet attitude end up in a relationship with a man so mean and crafty? That's why we have to be careful who we marry. Wealth without wisdom, a person is still able to be a fool. Abigail was beautiful, not only on the outside, but she was beautiful on the inside. Mm -hmm. And then she loves her neighbor. Now the Bible tells us of a story that happened, that, that King David was in the desert. And, and King David needed some items, some food and some water. And, and so King David, the Bible says he took 10 young men and, and, and he gave them these instructions. Listen to the instructions that he told them. He said, number one, I want you to go to Nabal. And number two, when you, when you arrive there, I want you to greet him in my name. He don't know you, but he know me. And so I want you to tell him that your, your, your King David has sent you. And then this is what I want you to do. I, I don't want you to be disrespectful. David says, I want you to say to him, long life to you, good health to you and your household, and good health to you also. Isn't that something? David said, I, I want you to be disrespectful for him because I know and I've heard that neighbors kind of rude and, and crafty. <clears throat> So you have to be very careful what you tell a person with those characters. Y'all know anybody like that? Mm -hmm. That you got to be careful and walk on pins and needles when you're around them. Because they will misconstrue everything that you say. Mm -hmm. if, if you tell them, you look good today. You know what they tell you? What that mean? Yesterday I didn't look so good. <laughs> I'm talking about you have to be careful what you tell folks these days. because. If you said, why you look good this morning? Uh -huh. Last evening, I didn't look good. Uh -huh. People mindset, you, you, you have to be careful of, of people mindset. <laughs> and so David said, I, I, you have to be careful of neighbor mindset. And so I need you to tell him exactly what I'm telling you. He said, now, tell neighbor that King David heard that his sheep shearing time. And then King David told him this. He said, now, when you get there, tell him, Tell neighbors when his shepherds were with us, we did not mistreat them, or did we steal from them? In other words, remind neighbor that when his men was with me, we took care of them. And 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 David said on the end, he said, Now ask him if he would. Please send me some food and some water 
all that he can. Now, with a request like that, anybody reasonable would have said, at least let me help King David out, right? If, if you had something extra, the Bible says he, he was a wealthy man. He was a man that, that heard a lot. So at least he could give something to King David. His men was in the desert. They were sweating. They was hungry. And so David said, look, I'm not going to even be particular. Just, just give me what you can. In verse 10, verse 10, y'all ought to read verse 10. 1 Samuel 25, verse 10. Nabal answered David and said, I don't know no David. Ain't that something? Now, you don't know the king of the land? You don't know the man that have taken care of your people? He said, I don't know David. He said, no. well, they said, well, now this is Jesse's son. You know, a lot of times uh, people might not know you, but they know your daddy, they know your mama. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, they'll say, well, this is Jesus, this is Junior. You know, this this is this is this is Aunt May's son. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when you go up to the country and you meet those people, that's what they tell you. I got a uh, auntie that uh Next weekend or this weekend, she'll be like 101. So we're going down to Crockett. And when we get there, you know what they're going to say? This is Junior. And this is Junior Boy. And, and this is so and so, so and so. This is their son. And this is their son. That's how they get to know you. So, so they say, well, well, if you don't know David, this is Jesse Boy. And, and neighbor said, I don't know Jesse. I have no food or no bread to give him. Leave me. And then verse 12, verse 12 tells us that the men got back on their heart. Boy, they start to go back, Brother Jackson. Who they got on back. Boy, but when they arrived to King David, they told him what, what he said. And, and, and you know, King David was a man of the gong's heart, but, but King David was a mean man. King David will cut your throat by looking at you. And he'll take your wife also. I don't know if you know that King David would do that. David told his men, David said, put on your sword. And David took about 400 men going back down to get on neighbor, to get neighbor. King David was mad, wasn't he? Because Mabel had said, I don't know who you are. He said, come on. And 400 men went back, <laughs> going back to get Nabal. Well, verse 14 tells us what happened in Nabal's household. Uh, one of the servants came to talk to Abigail, Abigail, the wife. Said, now, 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 now Miss Abigail, I, I heard what your husband told those men. Now, to be truthful, King David was real nice to us. They took care of us, and they gave us food, they gave us. He said, now, if you know King David, King David can be nice, but at the same time, King David can be a natural fool. <laughs> and probably King David is going to send those men back. He'll be back. And you know what the Bible says she did? You know, it's, it's amazing how many times women and wives have saved their husband. There's none like a, a good wife, a good wife. A good wife, a lot of times, take up the shortcoming of, of, a, of a husband. You, you can have a bad husband, but it's always better to have a good wife. If one of them going to be intelligent, it's better to have a good wife. Because society would put up with a bad man. And they'll say, well, he's just, he just a man. He's just a man. And, and, and men do that. They'll tell. They'll say, well, he's just a man, baby. And, and they'll do that. He'll be back. He'll be all right. Just let him know. But, but with a woman, now, well, it's fair or not. But with a woman, society don't don't judge you the same. Once you get a bad rep as a as, a, as a woman, society looks at you a lot different. Mm -hmm. And and we need to show tell our young men, women that too. 
that 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 they say equal, but a woman can't be equal to a man. Can't be equal to a man. I'm talking about, and as men as they want to be men, you are not a man. And women are not men, and men are not women. We, we just made different. We made different. And and but but in a marriage and in a relationship, even when the man kind of get off off cue, if they have a a, a solid foundated God-fearing wife, a lot of times she, she takes the heat for something that the man do. I'm not talking about, so, so it's, it's always good to, to have a level-headed woman. It's one the one that's gonna be respectful, that, that know the Lord, one that's going and most of the time, a woman is the one that, 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 that keeps the household together, to be, to be, to be truthful. Woman is one that keeps the household together. I have a coworker, and, and she was talking about uh, how bad her ex was. They, this was like Wednesday, and they got four, four children. And she started talking about it, and then we found out that the husband got custody of the four children. But that's unusual. It's unusual that the judge would give custody to a man, especially if a man was so wretched. So everybody in the room started looking at her a little bit different, you know what I'm saying? And she was talking about everything wrong with him, but, but people ain't crazy. And we, we need to know that a lot of time it's, it's the woman that, that, that keeps the children and, uh, together. It's, it's the woman is the one that the children really, really listen to. We know the man is supposed to be the head of the house. I know all that, but I'm telling you that a lot of times it's, it's also uh, the woman plays a very important part in the, in the relationship. Now, if you can get two good ones, it's good. But, but in verse 18, chapter 25, 18 through 35, it, it shows us how wise Abigail is in this instance. Abigail, when the man told her what had happened, give me about five more minutes to finish up. Abigail told her after what had happened, Abigail, the Bible says she went and she went and got a whole bunch of food. And she went down and she got on her donkey and she rode it. And in the midst of, of, of David and the 400 men coming, the Bible says Abigail met David, and when she met David, she bowed down on her knees. And, and listen to what she, what she does. She bowed down on her knees, and she confessed to David, David, my, my, my husband, Nabal, well, you know, King David, you're a smart man. You know that my husband's name means fool. That's scripture. She said, my husband name means fool and he is a fool. And, and between verses 80, I mean verses 18 to 35, her and David conversates down on the ground. She still bowed down and, and she begs and bows to, 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 to David to forgive her husband. For what she has done, for what he has done, <clears throat> and finally David accepts her plea and tells her to go in peace. In verse 30, 30, 36, Abel returns home. I'm gonna close it out. Abel returns home, and when she gets home, her her husband Nabal, the one that had no money the one that could not give anything to David, when she returns home, he's throwing a party. He's throwing a party and he's holding a banquet. Now the day before he couldn't give David no money, no time, no food, no water, but he's throwing a banquet for himself and the Bible said he was so drunk that he didn't know what was going on. 
And verse 37 says she didn't say anything that night, but the next morning she drove up and she told him what happened. And the Bible says his heart became like a stone. Hmm. Let me tell you two things about that that we've learned right here in these last two verses. We have to be careful that we, what we do to people that are anointed by God. We, we have to be careful how we treat neighbors and treat friends and, 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 and children, let me tell you something. Be careful how you treat your mom and your daddy. How you treat your mom and your daddy. That's, that's very important. So that's, that's a commandment. Obey your mom and your daddy and your days will be longer upon this earth. I see children now that are cursing out their mom and their daddy. Even when I work, I told the boy the other day, I have, I have three children that are grown that wouldn't talk to me and tell me what you're telling me right now. I'm talking about the, 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 the disrespect that children have for their parents. But we have, we have to learn that when, when a person is put in authority, they're there. And that's why it's so important for, for those that are of age for people to respect you. Even if you're wrong, people should respect you because you're of age. We have to learn how to respect people. But, but he, he had no respect for nobody. And the Bible says he became like stone. And the last thing I want to show you in this is that he had heart problems was that what happened to David the Bible says that David, when David heard that Nabal was dead, this is what he did. First of all, he thanked God for Abigail helping him out. Lord, you helped me not make a rash decision. And then he thanked God for Abigail, Abigail I mean, Nabal died of natural causes. And then the third thing he did, he said for Abigail to be his wife. He said for Abigail to be his wife. But the entire story of, of Nabal, and the reason I want to tell you about Nabal is that we have to watch how we treat people because we never know if the person is God sent. And it's real important for us to treat people right so that our hearts would not be made of stone. Isn't it good that we know how to love one another? Yeah. And that if we need something, I really believe that anybody here today, if I needed something, they would give it to me. And I hope you believe that about each other. If not, we're just wasting church. Amen. Amen. The other church is open right now, but neighbor had a heart problem that he didn't know how to get rid of because he was so angry, so mean. But let me tell you, church, God is so good. Come on, Brother Hicks. God is so good.